Hi everyone, my name is Josh Duke. I am the Assistant Director of Communications and Recruitment here at the College of Education. Thank you for joining us for our COE Preview Student Experience Panel. Uh, I would like now to introduce our wonderful panelists. Uh, would you like to go ahead and take it away? Yeah. Hi, my name is Joshua Dreher. I'm a fifth year doctoral candidate in the Combined Counseling and School Psychology PhD program. I also completed my master's here in sports psychology. Hello, my name is Alex Fisher. I'm also in the Combined Counseling Psychology and School Psychology PhD program. Uh, I've been here since about uh, 2018 uh, and uh, originally from Northern Virginia. And so being able to come here is a really great opportunity. It's been good. Howdy everyone, my name is Ravi Bhatt. I am a first year doctoral student in the higher education program. Um, and this is my third year in Tallahassee as I just finished my master's in higher ed um, in April. Hi, I'm Sam. I am in the elementary ed program in the School of Teacher Education. It's my first year of my master's, but I am in the bachelor's and master's combined program within the elementary education. Hi, my name is Sachin. I'm in my first year of the PhD program, and I was here previously for the master's uh, program in sport management. So it's my third year at FSU, and I'm an international student from India, and I've been in the US for uh, five years, uh, moved to a few other institutions, and finally found FSU to be my home. We'll just start out with kind of an easy question, and it's an informal talk, so feel free to kind of popcorn around. Uh, but I just want to hear from all of you, uh, why did you choose FSU? What about your program in particular or the university as a whole appealed to you? Um, so just because you're sitting right next to me, we'll start with you, Josh. I'm sorry, it's going to happen no, all no, day no, long. No, that's fine. Um, so I guess I'll start back when I uh, began my master's in sports psychology. It's a pretty niche field and there are not a ton of sports psychology programs across the country. Uh, FSU happens to have one of the best and so <clears throat> I'm originally from Los Angeles California packed up not kidding duffel bag in a single suitcase uh, sold my car flew across the country knew no one knew nothing and then started my master's here and now I'm here uh, seven years later um, because of the connections that I developed in the program I stayed here for my PhD in combined counseling and school psychology um, so that's why, through the relationships that I was able to foster here, that's why I stayed and picked this PhD program. For me, uh, choosing FSU, primarily um, the main focus that grabbed me was uh, the research. So I was doing some uh, crisis work earlier uh, in my life, uh, which focused on like suicide and distress and stuff like that. And so when I started working with that specific topic, I wanted to do more with it. And so I was looking for like research opportunities and places um, that really had that key focus that I was interested in. And FSU specifically with the program that I'm in had a great fit for me. And I definitely just wanted to join in, be able to kind of push that research forward and really be part of that. And so that's why I chose FSU. It was just in line with a great research group and uh, what I wanted to accomplish in my life. For me, similar to folks before me, it was um, coming from a long way away. I came, came down from Baltimore, Maryland, and the big reason I came down here was kind of the community that I met that would be in the cohort model of the higher education program for my master's program, and then the same cohort model and the faculty and a lot of their research kind of drew me into coming back for my doc program. Um, but it was also, I was ready for some different weather, transparently, from, <laughs> from Baltimore, Maryland, um, and just really, I think, one of the challenges and the benefits of, of FSU is just the like rigor of what master's and doc level classes look like um, help like create a really instructional and important relationship between you and your advisors and your faculty. And so I, I really appreciated that um, support. And so, yeah, now I'm back. So for me, because I went here for undergrad, I was choosing colleges because I had Florida prepaid. So I needed to stay in Florida and also I did all the campus tours, all of that, and when I came to FSU, I noticed that even for undergrad and just like in general, like FSU is so helpful. They, like the professors are so willing to like help you with anything you need and people, it's, there's just like a community feeling and I didn't feel that in any other campuses I attended. But also, I loved the program within elementary education because it has the combined aspect, so it's like, you get your bachelor's and master's in only five years, so I only have to do one year of my master's, and that program's not really found in a lot of other teacher education 
um, programs in different colleges. So that was super appealing to me, and I just loved the community aspect of SSU. Yeah. Um, I would say for me, I had a background previously in sports science, but I wanted to work more in the business side of the industry mm -hmm. in sports, and uh, the sport management program here has a really wide breadth of like areas that they cover, right from like sports marketing all the way to like the law, legal side of it, and different areas like analytics. So that's what the breadth of content that uh, was offered here was what attracted me to FSU. And I think back and back then and even now, it's one of the top three sports management programs for the master's and the PhD, which was an added factor. And also the relationships I was able to establish even before I got here, reaching out to professors, even if it was work virtually, they were pretty open about like talking to me and telling me about the program, about like what their objective was for me and the whole relationship piece uh, started out um, from a master's which extended to the PhD because a, a very specific pro, uh, research interest that I had aligned with uh, uh, one of the professor's research interests which was what led me to the PhD here. Awesome. Um, Obviously, so like I mentioned and kind of slipped up earlier, we did have a lot of online events, uh, but I thought it'd be important to kind of talk about the in-person uh, student experience. So I know it's kind of fun, geographically speaking, we have people coming from all corners of the country and world. And so, you know, do you all want to talk a little bit about what do you think about Tallahassee in general and what you like about it? And um, just to mix things up, Robbie, do you want to start? You mentioned a little bit about, you know, weather and things like that. So. Yeah. So obviously weather plays a role. Um, being able to go to the pool like all year round is very different than Baltimore, um, where pools close in like August, September. Um, but also I think Tallahassee is a really unique community where um, you find your groups and your, your community throughout the, the city of people that go to FSU with you in the same cohort, but also friends from different cohorts and different programs. And I think um, that's what's really unique about Florida State is you find a lot of those connections and the opportunity to connect. Um, even beyond just like, you know, our school. So I really like Tallahassee. It's not as big as Baltimore, and I, I'm a, definitely a city person, but Tallahassee has been a nice little, like, if I want to go hiking, if I want to go out, all those kinds of things, um, you find opportunities to do that with people that you care about. I can agree with you because, like, my cohort is so close now because we've been together for three years. So it's like <laughs> I made, like, really good friends out of, like, my classmates, and I feel like that's, like, not something I can say that my – friends that were like in medicine at FSU could relate to. So that's something that I, yeah, mm -hmm. being close to colors. Yeah, I feel like Tallahassee has, has a lot of like hidden gems and stuff that people uh, don't realize Tallahassee has in terms of like just, uh, as Ravi mentioned, like hiking the, na the nature part of Tallahassee is really vast and a lot of opportunities in that way. And I've, Honestly, having experienced different cultures, I have not seen uh, too many cities in the U.S. that has that has like embraced like the campus environment throughout the city and like like the word Seminole means a lot to like everyone around Tallahassee, which I've not seen like in like the other places I've been to. So having that association with uh, uh, the brand of FSU and FSU and Tallahassee, the synonymity between the two uh, was something that I really liked about the whole place, and I still do. You came from California, so it's a pretty big jump. Too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have to be honest, my expectations were pretty um, just absent because I had never, I could not pick Tallahassee out on a map. <laughs> so coming from California, I had never been before. I had never been to Florida. Um, I did my undergrad at San Diego State. So I went from LA weather, Orange County weather in high school to San Diego weather. Um, so I was very privileged in that regard. <laughs> uh, I did not love the humidity when I first got here, but I have to say every time I leave, my hair starts flaking, my <laughs> lips are chapped, so now I feel dependent on the environment in some, in some way, like biologically. Um, but I have to agree with the, the rest of the panelists here. When I had no expectations coming here. I came alone. Um, I, had been, I was dating my now wife at the time, um, but she was still in Seattle. 
another gorgeous place with a lot of nature and environment. Um, and when I got here, I was like, oh my gosh, this is kind of like Seattle. It's trees all around, forest surrounds the city. You drive half an hour anyway, and you're out in nature, um, which I loved. I love being able to see that in my backyard. California, not so much. You get views of, of parking lots and other parking lots, you know? So um, part of the natural beauty of Tallahassee is what kept me here. Um, also being able to develop my family here, um, adopt three of my six pets here. So without being here, I would not have them. So I owe a lot to Tallahassee. Um, and it's, it's quiet and slower than what I'm used to, which I came to really appreciate as I became older and more mature, wanting that stability and that stillness in life. Um, a lot of that came from here. So this has really shaped my outlook on where I want to live in the future. Don't want to go back to, to living in a major city again, like downtown. I want to be somewhere where I can look out my backyard and, and have a forest behind me. So um, yeah, Tallahassee is a beautiful place. Yeah, I agree. Specifically, what keeps me around is the things to do. And, and it's uh, what they already said also hiking, but also just kind of like the culture and the events going around in the town. Um, there's always something going on, um, whether it be like an event for like a certain culture and food or a specific event going on. Um, it's really a great time. I see just basically the whole city come together and have a great time there. Um, Interesting with that, even different pockets of Tallahassee, like you can have the downtown experience as well as have more of that park and recreation experience as well. On top of this also is that even kind of driving around Tallahassee, like just last weekend, I was part of the Monarch Festival in one area, I drove a couple you know, minutes the other way, and then I was a part of a rodeo. You know, so I mean, you could really do, find things to do and, and be in and around the town uh, constantly. So there's no reason, honestly, to stay home all the time. It's, it, there's a lot to do that I really enjoy it. So. And I would say, like, what is Tallahassee is like the Thanos meme that we see is like perfectly balanced as it should be. And if you're another graduate student looking to party, you have that side of it. You do. And if you're a graduate or an older student looking for the peace, of it, you have that. Thing. You can also party. Can we, yeah. can we check our Instagram live and make sure that President McColl is not tuned in? Or <laughs> um, so uh, obviously we talk. You don't actually have to check. <laughs> I just want to see Yeah, yeah. Uh, so obviously Tallahassee, you know, it, it's a place that you fall in love with for sure. But uh, you know, obviously here for grad school. So. Um, do you, you want to talk a little bit more about what you particularly love about your program? I mean, I know we talked a little bit in the introduction, but is there something else you kind of want to add about something that really appealed to you or you've since come to appreciate? Uh, we'll start with Alex. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, even though I came primarily for like the research, thinking like, oh, I want to advance the field and absolutely have done so in different, you know, in smaller aspects. Um, what I learned, what I really appreciated uh, from a program uh, specifically is one, the cohort. So really that bond that we kind of develop with each other um, going through just the successes, but also kind of like the difficulties of just how rigorous a program can be. Um, really fostering, I, I believe, lifelong friendships that were really meaningful for me, but also the mentorship from the supervisors I've had. Uh, there's been times where I was kind of amazed. You know, I tend to be personally for me, like sometimes, you know, at, at a certain point I was prideful, like, oh, I, I, I get it, I can understand. But really having a place where I can, one, humble myself and really be open-minded and really foster growth and development uh, was really meaningful for my own personal growth. And so I feel like having mentors, having supervisors, having uh, those staff that really care about your development, I think really you know, speaks volumes about the, just the uh, environment, the community within the program, at least for me, like that really helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, I think for me, one of the things, obviously, cohort I mentioned earlier, um, and faculty, but I think also the relationship between FSU's higher ed and just FSU in general and alumni, I think is something that really draws me in. We have the Hardy Center within the higher ed, and I also am the grad assistant for it, but um, beyond just that, there is like an intense connection between helping support current students and building relationships with um, graduated students. So job searching is just a little bit easier, but then also like if we're looking for research that someone is doing at UCLA or something, then we have connections there and they build connections. So I think that was a really big part of it, is just being able to connect with people beyond just our FSU bubble that have been through what we're going through and, and that really means a lot to me. 
So this is specific to like the program or like the yeah. school of teacher education, but I really liked how, and this goes for not just elementary ed, this goes for like music education, elementary, not elementary, excuse me, English, English yeah. education, like all the different programs, you are placed in a different school and with teacher every semester that you're in the program. So, well, I had my junior year would be COVID, but if, I, <laughs> if it wasn't COVID, I would have had two placements. So like, I've had so much experience in different classrooms and different grade levels to figure out what I want to do after. And a lot of other, like I have a couple of friends in different programs in different colleges in elementary ed, and they only get that one full like student teaching experience. And you can talk as much as you want about teaching, but you have to be put in that like classroom to actually learn and know how to set, like classroom manage and all those things. So. I thought that was super interesting, and that's what really appealed me to the elementary ed program. Um, I would say in sports management, uh, the benefits and like the advantages of being here are twofold, and I can briefly touch upon both. One is from an undergraduate and a master's student perspective, where the focus is heavily on experiential learning because sport, if like everyone knows, it's not a field where you like learn a lot of theories and like de develop any like a complicated uh, equation or something. It's, up, it's about gaining experience from the field. And our uh, alumni network in the sport management program and uh, the opportunities that FSU itself has, having one of the, uh, the most historical sport, sporting uh, athletic departments, there's so many opportunities for students to like, get that experience so they're better prepared for the industry. But then once the pe in the doctoral level, the shift is more towards academia and focusing on like the critical thinking aspect of why you want to like get into your own paradigm and why do you want to apply that to a certain aspect of uh, research. The, the shift is uh, different, but it's very much focused towards what you want to do and it really tailors your expectations and your outcomes to the academia for the PhD and uh, to the industry for the masters and the undergrad. So I love the way that they uh, have specific focuses for specific groups. Yeah, and I'll, I'll echo some of what was said here about the breadth of experience that I get in, in my program or that we get in our program. Um, ours is unique in that it's a combined counseling school psychology program. It's also unique that we have a, a pretty significant and uh, distinguished alumni base that are involved in vocational research and career psychology. Um, a lot of our faculty members and alumni come from that branch of, of psychology and work over in the career center. Um, so we get experiences in clinical counseling psychology, we get experiences in school psychology, uh, both assessment and counseling, and then we also have this unique exposure to vocational or career psychology that is rarely found at other institutions or other programs. Um, <clears throat> it's unique in the fact that every semester we're giving a unique opportunity in the first two years of our training experience to have a different practicum experience similar to the teacher education. So we're bouncing around because part of this field and, and I'm sure a lot of your other fields, like psychology is so broad that to know what you want to do for the rest of your life in the first semester is nearly impossible. And so being able to have a breadth of experience within your first two years gives you exposure to a lot of the different fields within psychology or subfields. And then you get to spend the next couple years tailoring your experience to what you want to specialize in. Um, and Part of what allows you to do that is, as Alex mentioned, the, the mentorship and the supervision that's offered by faculty members, incredibly supportive. Um, I've never met uh, a faculty member who has turned down an opportunity that I wanted um, to take on to grow and, and develop my own professional identity. Um, they're always encouraging, always supportive, even if it's not a field or, or subfield that they're familiar with. Um, you know, it's all about that uh, the transferable skills that we're able to take over. So if they can help support what we do, whether or not they're familiar with the theories that we're discussing or the techniques we're, we're talking about, they can do it from, from a top-down approach and, and help uh, scaffold our learning in that way. 
I want to add on that uh, specifically also uh, for the program trying to be a future psychologist that um, if you want to be more academic, you want to be more research, more like potentially a professor, they will gear your experiences towards that. You want to be more application based, um, go and get licensure, become independent uh, psychologist, whether you're in a private practice or a hospital, wherever, you can, you can tailor your experience to that as well. Um, and so also when you uh, are finished with like the core uh, didactic clinical experiences, um, kind of was just saying, when you go out into the community, you get, end up in private practice, in the hospitals, in a, a health consortium, um, and really try to work on what might interest you in any of the specific topics or anything like that. So, cool. Um, who haven't I started with? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, I think this one will be a pretty easy one for you, just because of the nature of your program. But um, what do you hope to do after you finish up with the program? Assuming oh, you want to be a teacher. Yes, yeah. I do want to be a teacher, but I'm actually going to teach abroad because I really want to learn Spanish, so okay. I'm applying for those programs. And, but that's actually really cool because my professor actually suggested it to me because I was like, I really want to go abroad, I don't know, and then they give me a bunch of programs, so it kind of ties into the college bed. But yeah, so I want to be in Spain, hopefully. Very fun. <laughs> right. I, you know, got a little surprise. I thought it was going to be uh, straightforward, but I yeah. like it. So, uh, let's go this way, just to kind of, we'll, cool. we'll mix up. We've been going, yeah, you know, that way. What was the question again? What do you want to do after graduation? Oh, that's yeah. a great question. Um, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's okay to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, right now, uh, at this very moment, I would love to go faculty route and, like, be in the classroom and, and help future higher ed minds within the classroom, uh, but ask me in two years, and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so for me, my end goal is uh, I want to be an active duty military psychologist. I'm per currently part of the Florida Army National Guard, so like every couple months or so I shave all this off, jump out of planes and come back. Um, but I want to be able to utilize uh, this program, the skills that I'm taught for the military, so that's where I aim to be at the end. Yeah. Um, my goals are to work as a child psychologist, hopefully within an interdisciplinary medical setting, children's hospitals, uh, private practices, things like that. I would say my goals have transitioned a little bit from my time here at the master's to now at the PhD, where to the ma initially I started out as someone who wanted to go into the sport industry and uh, start working on like a real time uh, industrial situation and the more time I spent on like some research projects and started to understand like the nature of research and academia and it made me realize a few things about like myself in terms of I like to mentor people, I like to be in the teaching realm and now that has shifted my focus into academia and more specifically into an R1 position where I focus more on research but also have time to uh, a few classes and um, mentor future students. Yeah. I think that's a great point that you mentioned that like I you know you're, you're coming from a master's program into your PhD mm -hmm. we're getting towards the tail end and I came from a master's program in a total sub totally different subfield I kind of had like a quarter life crisis <laughs> towards the end of my master's program because sports psychology is unique in that um, you don't, you know, it's psychology is attached to the name, but you're not a clinical psychologist. That's not guaranteed out of uh, master's or PhD programs. And so I came to this like crisis of faith. Did I want to work within more performance-based psychology field, or did I want to um, be more into counseling therapy and, and helping children in that way? And I had to pick, you know, I, I had to, to make this decision that was going to resonate for the rest of my future is going to depend on, or is going to uh, decide where I wanted to go in PhD programs. Um, and again, back to the mentorship, none of the professors that I talked to about this and, and this difficult decision I had to make told me, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. All of them were supportive, all of them were inquisitive, all of them helped me critically think about the decision that I was going to make so that I made the best one for myself. I think Josh, that's a like. I think that's one thing all of us face around this time and our academic journey is that question of, am I doing this right? Is this the right uh, path for me? And like, I had the same thing having come from like I started out as a mechanical engineer, mm -hmm. which is totally opposite <laughs> what I'm doing. Right now. 
and then had a sports science background, worked a little bit in sports administration, was almost all over the place in sports. So before coming to FSU, that, that was my question, is like, is this what I want to do? And even at that point, starting the master's program, I wasn't 100, I didn't see myself as an academic uh, two, three years later. But I think that keeps evolving and having that question and having that doubt, I think it's like fine because that makes you reflect more on like what you want to do and what you don't want to do on the other side too. Yeah. I started with marketing. There we <laughs> Completely go. Completely was like business out and then I changed, so yeah. But I also wanted to add that I'm not just gonna go abroad and like disappear. I'm gonna come <laughs> 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 please, don't, please don't disappear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back and I wanna like eventually go into like principal route, like administrator route, and that's why I decided to do my master's because that's like higher rating of yeah. getting. And at that point, you'll need your marketing, right? Yeah. So you'll need the whole yeah. school. We also yeah. have degrees in uh, educational administration in the ELPS department that Robbie and I are in, so you can always circle right on that. <laughs> <laughs> Third round. <laughs> And I don't mean to belabor the point, um, no, no. but the only thing I would add to is like these questions I think we often, all of us, even at where y'all are at, might still be asking ourselves and we don't have to answer them alone too. I think that that's what's unique about um, the College of Ed too is like we have really intentional advisors that are not only posing the questions, but are like, um, here's your potential answer to the question, so here's a job that might ask, uh, like meet what that answer is or like you don't know the answer yet let's work together so I think there's that intentional relationship especially um, like as you get further along of just how can we answer this question together yeah that's a nice like cherry on top of that conversation that's <laughs> well put um, so obviously this whole week is focused on prospective students and uh, students interested in our program so do you all do any of you have any advice uh, that you'd recommend like anything in when you were applying to be a student here, like anything that you think helps with your application or anything like that? We'll start with Josh. We'll go classic. Um, I see, I feel like I'm, I'm biased because I have some experience in career psychology and vocational psychology. So I've helped students answer this question for themselves <laughs> a number of different times when they've come into the career center. Um, but the advice, ask questions kind of kind of building off of the answer to the last one you know you you won't get an answer to a question that you don't ask so whether that's to yourself or whether that's to someone else um, be open to new experiences don't let that scare you off um, a lot of people starting out their graduate education their undergraduate education even at the PhD level they're not going to have all of the experiences necessary for being totally competent in that field um, it's not expected of us at this point applying for internship. It's probably not expected of professionals going into their first job. We're all at some stage of the learning process. So if you don't feel totally prepared for the journey you're about to take, that's good. That, that's, not only is that okay, that's good because that means you still have stuff left to learn. And if there's one thing that I've learned about being here for so long, is that people who work in education love teaching other people's stuff <laughs> whatever it is and so if you know everything where's the fun in being able to teach you about the field I would say for uh, for me a best uh, case scenario of, you know applying for a program is make sure it's best fit and that and that's honest for you to make sure that uh, this is a program that you want that you feel passionate about because um, having a compass kind of like a goal of like what you're trying to aspire to will get through a lot of situations where sometimes you're second guessing yourself which is natural but you want to kind of be able to kind of uh, get back on that horse and really uh, persevere through that on top of that as well um, being able to take the time and ensure that when you're applying that you, you kind of diversify as well, that you are congruent with yourself, but you're flexible. And I think that's also what they want to look for. It kind of tacks onto that where the flexibility goes into being able to be receptive for more information, to be open-minded, and also be uh, very invested in yourself. And they can see that confidence, but being able to be flexible, I think is key, especially when you're doing some interviews. So that's good. Um, you took bits and pieces of my answer, but um, I would say like, Mine is the less fun one, but like do your external and internal research. Like your external research is like really look into what the program's providing, see what opportunities there are, what practicums are included, like 
what that is, but internally, like, answering that question of, like, what I want, and then um, do I see myself here, and how can the space that I'm entering into, if that's Florida State, that's awesome, um, contribute to what my needs and what my wants are, um, because that ultimately will create the experience for you, is just answering those questions throughout the time, so do your research, it's important. So my specific program is pre pretty intense to get into, um, but I have had a lot of friends who want, like, wanted to become elementary ed teachers and they didn't get into the program, and there are other programs in the College of Ed that you can do that you can just take the test at the end and then become a teacher. So I think really it's just, there's so many different approaches of where your outcome is. Like I, I agree with everything that everyone's saying, like it's really about the journey. So like, if your journey is not what you wanted it to be originally, like that's okay. Your dreams and ideas of what life's gonna look like is gonna change constantly. So like, I think make a plan, try to stick to it a little bit, but if it changes, don't be upset. So that's, yeah. I would say in terms of sport management, not just at FSU, but if you want to work in sports, there is one question that you have to keep asking yourself right from the time you apply for a position um, for, for a master's program or an undergrad program. Do you really want to work in sport? If so, how much do you want to work in sport? How much are you willing to put in? Because this is not, sports is not a typical nine to five job where you go in and clock in and clock out. You're gonna have multiple 12 hour, 14 hour days where if you, especially if you're working in like event management or working with like a team. So it's not your traditional job, it is, very intensive at the start, um, and it takes it takes uh, a lot of effort to get into the field and uh, make 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 your make a position for yourself. So ask that question uh, every once in a while, just to make sure that you are still on track to uh, achieving what you want to achieve. And if you feel like that's not what you want to do. Uh, then that's when you probably want to start thinking about like how else can I diversify my experience from here? Because ultimately you do, you do not want a degree that is not going to help you, but then you also want a degree that gets you not just a, a, a piece of paper, but something beyond that. And uh, to be more specific to this program itself, there is a lot that uh, the College of Ed and the Sport Management Program can offer to you, but that only depends on how much you offer to the program in terms of your commitment and effort. So I would say if you are willing to invest your interest and effort into the program, you will get the same or more from the program, but that interest and effort should start from you. And from uh, a doctoral perspective, make sure you understand what a doctoral degree enti entails, and being a terminal degree, it is going to be intensive, and you will have to prepare yourself for, for it, but no one expects you to, like the others said, no one expects you to know everything starting a doctoral degree, because if that was the case, they would give you the doctorate. <laughs> so be open-minded, and like uh, Alex said, like it's easier for, for someone to fill a cup that's empty than to fill a cup that's already full. So be open to all different kinds of ideas and make sure you don't reject an idea before you learn about it. And I, th I think to, to follow off of that, the doing your homework on, the, on all the factors of the different programs you're looking at, I think it's important to know like when, when students come in the Career Center, when they are unsure about what they want to do in life or what career they want to pursue, we're usually asking what's important to them. What do they value in life? Because as a lot of the panelists here mentioned, you're going to need to make compromises, whether that's a compromise on the typical work day that you're experiencing and the lack of sleep that you might be getting, whether that's the compromise on seeing friends or family, how much time you have to spend, um, the location of where you're doing this program, you're going to compromise at some point because there's no perfect program for any one person. If you know what your values are, it's much easier to identify where you're willing to compromise and what programs align with those values that you have. So it takes some internal soul searching and understanding of what's most important to you 
to get the most out of the program that you pick. Otherwise, you're not going to want to work the 12 to 14 hour day. Right? Mm -hmm. That's going to make it really difficult to stay for a five to six year program. Mm -hmm. I wanted to build on that because I forgot to mention it, but this is important because I'm like a teacher. If you want to be a teacher, be a teacher. Don't let anyone like tell you that you shouldn't because of pay or you're going to have terrible days or the kids are going to be awful because like now being in the classroom, I'm like, I chose the right field. Like, I, I don't know what else I would do if I, if I was marketing, I think I would want to die. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> but yeah, so don't let anyone deter, like, what your dreams are, because it's your future, it's not theirs. And I would say, like, even using the word sacrifice or compromise shouldn't be in a negative connotation here. Rather, see it as what are you willing to invest, rather than a sacrifice, because you're when you say sacrifice, it kind of feels like you're losing something. You're not losing something here, you're investing in your future. So what are you willing to invest now for something, a career that you will love in the, in, in the future? So that's what you would need to think about in that way. Um, so we, that's all the questions that we had prepared ahead. Uh, so we had a couple that were sent in. Uh, how are we doing on time? All right, we'll just do a couple of them, but first, does anyone have any questions in the audience? No, okay. Well, we have some, like I said, that were sent ahead. Um, so just kind of really quickly, um, what's the housing situation like for in-person students? What do you, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Um, okay, so, cause I'm going here for undergrad. So like I've, I've lived in many different places. Um, I wanted it to live in like a more chill, like calm area. So if you do want to do that with grad school, I'd recommend not living in College Town. Um, and that's where I lived all four years. So like that's I just I wouldn't live there. I like I would live like Forum, Red Point. Like it's like 15, 10 minutes out, and the drive's kind of nice because you're like okay, like getting ready for class, whatever. But yeah, so I'd recommend there's there's houses that you can live in on Jackson's Bluff. Um, yeah, you can also live like in near like the politician area. So like that's what that's what me and my friends we call, call it, it. Yeah. the politician area. So that's like near. Um, oh my goodness, I'm just thinking quads, but that's not a good thing to say. Um, what's it called? What's that area? Do you know like downtown. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Politicians area. Yeah, just, the just, the area. Area. just because Tallahassee is unique, we have multiple. There's, we do. Yeah. 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 So yeah. if you want to chill, <laughs> ten minutes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to be in the very lively student, young people, twenty people, twenty age, I would live in College Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk about talk about compromises. You either compromise the, yeah. the time that it takes to travel, and mm -hmm. that you get to walk to school, but then Army. you're also and parking, but then you're also compromising, like I lived at Seminole Flats on West Call my first year here, right across from uh, Chick-fil-A. So it's always busy at every hour, walking, riding my bike, it, it, it's scary, because there's always traffic going in and out. So you, it, comp, back to compromise, you either live in a busy place with lots of noise, but you get to walk to school, which is really nice, or you live a bit further out where it's quieter, but you gotta drive in, so you have to you have to think about that. I think one thing I would say is like it also depends on whether you have a car or not yeah. in Tallahassee because the public transportation is good around campus. <laughs> there you go. Conditions <laughs> <laughs> apply, but around Conditions campus <laughs> in a half mile, one mile radius, the public transportation is pretty good. So there are a lot of houses and apartments that are on the public transportation routes. So in that way, it's a little bit beneficial on Ocala and High Road. There's a lot of apartments. Uh, but for the most part, people have cars. But this is to specifically to like international students. And I, uh, being one myself, I did not have a car. And I had to like bike around and take the bus for uh, the major part of like the last two years. 
So if you are an international student, I would say make sure that you are on the bus route so that it's a bit convenient for you to like get to campus. Once you're inside campus, almost every building inside campus is connected to, a, some, uh, to some bus stop, so that is convenient. But just make sure you're on like a bus route so you're not walking for like 25, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And just one thing, it's not related to the apartment thing, but I wanted to add that was just to international students applying, this is just an added uh, thing that you would probably want to keep in mind is beyond um, what the program can offer in terms of education and resources, also be aware of what your field offers in terms of visa sponsorships and jobs that can not only provide you with the job but also provide you with like the sponsorship because that becomes a very important um, criterion for like rejection of jobs in many cases. So be aware of how your industry is conducive to hiring internationals, be it in education, in like psychology or sports. Uh, Make sure you're aware of that before you apply. And uh, the CGE here, the, uh, the global uh, engagement uh, is pretty good. They have a really huge community and a lot of good advisors that help you with that, but make sure you're in contact with them and you're, you understand what the industry can offer to you, specifically as an international. Um. Well, I think we're going to wrap things up. Uh, do you all want to have just like a final word, like anything you want to add or anything like that? Close if, it out. If you've never been, wanted to like kind of complete the housing thing, one of the reasons that it's tough to walk to campus, especially if you're not from Tallahassee and you were born in a desert in California, <laughs> is that it rains here. And <laughs> it rains a lot and sometimes in short periods of time. Um, so walking or biking may not even be feasible where you are depending on the time of day or the season. Fortunately, Tallahassee has beautiful winters where it doesn't rain ever. Um, but during the summer, woof. Yeah. So expect rain, expect thunderstorms, expect hurricanes. It's all normal. And no one seems to panic about it whatsoever, <laughs> which is so weird. But this, is, this is such a California. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why is it raining so much? I've yeah. been here for 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, I would say uh, just a slight on that as well is um, there are a lot of hills. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. whether you're driving, biking, or whatever's going on, there's, there's a lot of hills going on. Um, but you, you, you're, you learn to love them. Um, but I would say uh, that overall, just kind of wrapping up for me, is that uh, take your time. You know, kind of be very present. You know, if you come and visit, absolutely try to, you know, see what you do like and what maybe would be a barrier to you. Um, and kind of check in with yourself. But overall, I would say from my personal experience, you know, with this program and just FSU and Tallahassee in general, um, nothing else like it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it. And it's been really great for me. And so, uh, yeah, if you happen to come by and visit and everything, uh, I hope it's on a beautiful day. Um, there's, you know, a little plug for a tree. It's called the Litchgate. Um, absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful tree. If you ever come by and look at it, <laughs> absolutely worth it. Um, like you learn to love the hills, you learn to love the people as well. Um, I think that would be my closing thing is like you've got people in your corner within your program, outside of your program, and just at Florida State in general. And like the structure of Florida State is it's it's a big community, it's a huge campus, it's very different than my undergrad, but everyone feels very close. And um, there's that, that importance of and the culture of like connection that I think continues to draw me in and allows us to live day by day because it's important and it's fun to be part of that. I completely agree. The community aspect is like, final component but I'd also say you need to put yourself out there because that's how you build community it's not just gonna like come right out of your front door and be like oh hey you want to be my friend so like reaching out to people opening up to people doing things like this like just kind of put yourself in situations that might make you uncomfortable and that's how you grow in college in general so yeah that's my closing remark um basically all of that and is it, it takes a lot for all of you to make this journey to Tallahassee unless you're like in Tallahassee and you're just driving down, <laughs> which is still a big deal with the traffic we have, but be proud of this uh, decision that you make uh, and know that people like us, we're all here to support you and feel free to reach out to any of us regarding our programs.
and then go and else. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's like, <laughs> All right. That was good. Uh, well, thank everyone uh, who's tuning in on our Instagram Live, uh, who's watching the recording of this. Thank you to our wonderful panelists and the uh, amazing FSU Marching Chiefs. Uh, <laughs> shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's talk. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, you can always uh, email education.communications at fsu.edu, uh, and we'll put you in touch with the right people. Uh, I do want to just quickly plug, we did have a couple of sessions already this week, but tonight we have the School of Teacher Education CUE preview, uh, and tomorrow is our last event, which is our Educational Psychology uh, and Learning Systems pr uh, Program. Uh, so you get an opportunity to meet faculty members uh, and ask your questions. So it's not too late to register for those. You can register for those at bit.ly forward slash COE dash preview dash 2022. Got that locked. really proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but once again, thank you all for tuning in uh, and go Knowles.